Good morning and welcome to the presentation from Infusion Resin to Structural Bonding, Henkel's Sustainable Solutions for Electric Aviation. My name is Mareike Noack and at Henkel I'm responsible for a new evolving market, the urban air mobility. And as you can see here on the right side or on your left side, one day in the near future it will just be normal to hop in one of these electric um, flying taxis and go to work or go to your weekend vacation, for example. But this, this mode of transportation is very energy intense, so we really need to be sure what materials we are using and how we are making aviation in the electric models sustainable and successful. So the three main drivers I identify for the electric aviation and more focused on the urban mobility is sustainability. It is fast production, high throughput at the known aerospace quality level. And in this case, sustainability is not just a buzzword and it must not be a buzzword. I mean, when we are developing new, new technologies, new modes of transportation, we cannot ignore the rules of global warming. We all know the uh, increasing numbers of water scarcity areas all around the globe. If the polar caps keep melting like this, the Netherlands will have a severe problem in just a few years. So whatever wants to be the next big thing in transportation or in general in our industries, we need to comply to sustainable standards and if possible, even outperform them. Um, we at Henkel are looking at sustainability not just from a point of aspects of material and vehicle design, but how does it establish itself along the entire value chain? And um, this is an approach we are driving quite proactively and transparent to educate like our suppliers and our customers as well. And Sustainability was always something very core, what we have done, but we have now put it at one of our strategic pillars. And our vision in response to the global challenge is that we lead with technologies and solutions in bonding, sealing and coating that will have an impact on solving current and future global environmental and social challenges. As you can see on the right side, we have divided it into three different chapters. It's about reducing CO2 emissions and it's about reducing energy consumption overall. And this is what we are talking about today. If we are exchanging the fuel combustion of an aircraft with a battery, that's great because we are already reducing CO2 emissions, at least in service. But um, changing to composite and lightweight materials, we are also reducing um, the overall energy consumption. The second pillar is recyclability. And actually yesterday we had some really good panel discussions about sustainability and reusing and recyclability of um, carbon fibers. Bonding in general is seen as a very good partner um, during service, but bonding, or I'd better say debonding, can also be a very good partner when it comes to recycling of these components. The third uh, pictogram is about health and safety. And we, as a material supplier, um, are, of course, focusing very much on health and safety, whether it's the raw materials that we use in our products and facilities, whether it's the formulated products that go to our customer assembly lines, or whether it's in the use phase. So, for example, frame retardant uh, materials that, in the end, protect you and me in an aircraft. So, really um, reducing the overall harmful content in our um, products and value stream, uh, streams. So we set ourselves a very ambitious goal, and this is we are working for net zero in 2040. What we have already achieved is a 50% reduction of CO2 emissions per ton of um, product in our production facilities, and we will not stop working on this ambitious goal until we are there and hopefully even outperforming it. At Henkel, we are always having the customer in mind and we know about our impact for all market segments. And um, as you can see here, we are not only um, active in the aerospace segment, but in many different other segments as well. 
Um, for example, it's about the lightweight materials that can be used in aircraft to reduce the um, carbon footprint there. It's about thermal interface materials that are dissipating the generated heat on PCBs and therefore um, reducing the needed energy for active cooling, for example. Our non-hazardous adhesive make smart health patches working and monitoring the health of the patients. Um, when it comes to sustainable energy, of course, this needs to be efficient. And our electronic materials are enabling, for example, solar or photovoltaic panels to work as efficient as possible. And our um, potting materials enable filtration systems to filter water clean and safely. This was an overview for you um, to see the priority that Henkel is giving towards sustainability. And we have it always in mind, whatever we do in our daily lives, it's about um, processes, but of course it's about our products and the products that we give to you, to our customers. As I come from the urban air mobility side of things, I know about the challenges and hurdles that this market will have. And when we think about airspace, it's of course about airplanes and it's about helicopters. But helicopters are noisy and they are expensive. And looking into the automotive industry, for example, if you want to reduce costs, you need to ramp up your production and your build rates. So um, this is true as well for the urban air mobility. But as I said, um, it's a very energy intensive way of transportation. So we need to be sure what kind of materials are we using in these fast production environments. And looking at an RTM process, for example, it's really a bottleneck um, because it's a long time for curing on the mold. And this is why I would like to introduce our Loctite RI9501 Aero infusion resin to you because this is a real game changer for the RTM processes. Looking at a standard Aero RTM resin system, it needs to be preheated to 80 degrees C, and um, the mold is preheated to 120 degrees C, then it is, um, yeah, the resin is injected. Everything is heated up to 180 degrees C, and it needs to cure there for 90 minutes to reach the final mechanics. Then it's cooled down. So, we sat down and thought, OK, the bottleneck is really there. It's 90-minute cure on the mold. What can we do about it? And the answer is quite easy, reducing the cure time on the mold. And I have to admit, the development was not as easy. But um, yeah, we are there. And the Loctite RI9501 Aero can be injected from room temperature to 40 degrees C. Then everything is heated up to 120 and uh, after 20 minutes cure on the mold, we are already achieving 96% uh, degree of cure. So it's well above the green state, and if we want to achieve this 98, 99% degree of cure, we can have a post-cure in a traditional oven. Um, here you see some more properties. So it's a 2K um, epoxy resin, and uh, as I said, after these 20 minutes, we are already at 96% of the mechanics. Of course, viscosity is an important thing when it comes to infusion resins, because we don't want to have like unwetted areas. Uh, we don't want to have fiber washing out. And uh, this is what we get with this uh, material as well. At infusion temperature, so between 20 and 40 degrees C, we have 120 centipoise as a viscosity, so we really have a smooth surface afterwards. There are um, no voids inside, as I said, no fiber wash. Um, it really looks impressive. And yeah, the game-changing number here as well. Oh, again, it's 20-minute cure at 120 degrees C. If you're interested in more data on this um, yeah, new product, please come to me afterwards. I'm happy to exchange contact details and uh, some more information on this very interesting product. As we are now able to produce components or uh, composite in RTM processes four to five times quicker than the standard uh, process, we need to be quicker at uh, surface preparation as well. And here we have two different 
processes we can use. One is abrading the uh, surface manually, so it means, yeah, abrasion by hand, and this of course comes with the known health and safety um, concerns, and it comes with the inaccuracies that a manual process um, includes. So we are definitely recommending using a pre-impregnated polyester or nylon uh, peel ply, such as the Loctite EA 9895 wet peel ply, Aero from us. And this is really supporting um, uh, the bonded joint durability afterwards. As you can see in the pictures, um, the standard industry peel ply leaves the surface like yeah, very mixed, and we have here and there some, some fibers. And on the right side, we have the EA9895, which leaves a very defined surface, and this is um, supporting the cohesive failure of the adhesive um, yeah, during testing. Although everything in the electric aviation, and as I said, focusing on the urban mobility is about fast production, we must not forget the safety and the aerospace quality. So safety has always been and will always be the highest priority in the aerospace sector. And this, of course, will not change with the electrified aviation. So the challenge for us is to get a high throughput managed with higher aerospace qualities. And our answer to this is to um, automate, for example, paste adhesives or to develop new interior adhesives, uh, interior potting materials that can be potted manually into honeycombs or can be um, yeah, automated uh, dispensing. The main function of a potting compound is to reinforce components. The material itself is liquid but highly filled system which is filled into holes and assemblies. It supports lightweight components, combines adhesive bonding with structural performance and it is suitable for both manual and automated dispensing. And yes, everything is all right with you. You see me here on the stage and in the video itself. Um, before this role, I was actually working in the lab and developing this Loctite EA 9894 before I changed roles mid of last year. Um, so what we have here is one component epoxy adhesive, um, which is used as an interior potting material and it comes with FST requirements. Flammability, smoke and toxicity are very important characteristic when it comes to application inside in a cabin. So in case of an emergency, you are able to see through the smoke because it's lighter and thinner than uh, normal smoke. If you're inhaling it, it is not as toxic as normal smoke. And this material is also complying to very strict flammability tests. Um, we were able to get this um, automated dispensed material and highly filled potting compound to a density of 0.7 grams per cubic centimeter. So this is really supporting the lightweight um, protection and stability inside the cabin. To go back to our sustainability journey, we are of course able to achieve the FST characteristics without using halogenated flame retardants. So we are now able to have lightweight materials inside the cabin, but what about the protection and lightweight materials on the outside of an airplane? And looking at flying taxis, they will most likely fly in sunny weather conditions. They will yeah, not see storms and most likely will not see any lightning strikes. But looking at an electrified aircraft, of course it will fly in every weather conditions. And having electricity on board, having the battery on board of the aircraft, and having lightning strike outside, this just calls for lightning strike protection, of course. And as a traditional airplane, we have different zones that need to be protected in different types. And here we have the surface conductivity um, versus the aerial weight. Our Loctite EA9845 surfacing film lightning strike 
uh, film adhesive is coming or is including a metal mesh, copper or aluminum. And uh, the more copper or aluminum you have inside this uh, surfacing film, the better the surface conductivity, but of course, at the same time, the higher the aerial weight. So for the different protection zones at this aircraft, we need to uh, consider different ratios between conductivity and the aerial weight. Um, to come back to the flying taxis, as they are in, in the sunny weather conditions, maybe you remember your last summer holiday, whether it's one year, two years, three years ago. Um, sun is not always fun. So it harms our skin, and it can also harm the surface of an aircraft or the surfacing film. So we need to be sure that our material are UV resistant. And uh, what we've done, I hope you can see the graphs uh, properly, what we've done is FDIR measurements. And on the left side, so the blue graphs, um, this is our 9845 surfacing film, and we have measured the FDIR initially and after four hours of UV exposure. And you can see um, in the blue circle at this specific wavelength, it changed minimal, and therefore we have a minimal damage in, uh, in the material, but it looks very, very good. On the right side, however, we have tested a non-UV resistant surfacing film, and um, again, initially FDIR measured, and after four hours of UV exposure, and you see a significant damage. So on the right side, we cannot be sure that the mechanical characteristics or corrosion protection is still there as the initial um, product was designed. But on the left side, so with the 9845 surfacing film, we can be sure that um, those properties are still there. And to translate these very technical graphs into real life pictures, um, I have here this um, yeah, paint adhesion grid test method. And on the left side, you see the unexposed um, f uh, surfacing film. And on the right side, same method, four hours of UV exposure. And afterwards, this grid was carved into the film adhesive. And as you can see, no visible damage. So it um, yeah, looks actually the same. So we can be sure that the properties after UV exposure and before are very, very, very much the same. Um, as urban mobility and electric aviation is not only about the composite and uh, the bonding of the composites and lightweight structures, I have brought another video with me to show you what other um, components and electric components are also very important for the electric aviation in future and where Henkel can support this journey. So as you can see, Henkel is not only active in composite bonding, but also in the um, electronic side of um, yeah, the electric aviation journey. And Henkel is a very reliable partner when it comes to sustainability, it, uh, when it comes to fast processing, for example, 20 minute cure time on the RTM mold at the known aerospace quality levels. Thank you for joining me this morning. And um, yeah, happy to get some questions. And um, 
If not, have a great last day at the exhibition and bon appetit. Are there any questions? I know the first one is always the most difficult, but... Uh, Great. If not, you can... Okay, no, we don't see the uh, presentation anymore. Yes. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I just have a question. Maybe it's so technical for, for this conference, but it's regarding the FTIR uh, test that you perform on your... on the UV um, degradation tests. Um, just to know uh, wh why you evaluate that particular uh, wavelength for, for the degradation of, the, of your materials? Um, so when we look into literature, there are two different wavelengths um, yeah, promoted, let's say, for this UV damage or no damage, and um, this is one of these wavelengths. Okay, okay. Yep. Maybe we can discuss later. On. Sure, okay, happy to you. do so. Yep. Great, then see you later. <laughs>